Hello, this is uh, Peter Deswitt again, instructor for Accounting 350 or Corporate Finance. So we're going to finish up. This is a lecture part B for chapter two. So our profitability ratios, net profit margin, return on total assets, uh, ROAs, uh, and then there was also ROEs, return on common equity. Again, these are these are ratios that people, that we calculate to to see if we are being profitable or if we're going to get money back or if we're making money. So in this particular company that we're looking at, Unilite, so the profit margin is net profit divided by sales, so 54 divided by 1500. So uh, it's going to be, well, how would you say that? 36 uh, tens, hundred, th 36 thousandths. So because look, tens, hundreds, thousands, so 36 thousandths or 3.6%. The industry average is 4.9%. So again, this is below the industry average. This suggests that it is not generating as much income per do dollar of sales as the average firm in the industry. Okay, so this is another kind of a red flag. I mean, we're doing okay, I think, for the most part. But the thing is, is like there are these little indicators that something we might need to look at some management decisions a little bit better and try to improve the overall position of the company okay so here's a return on assets no uh, net income divided by total assets which is at 64 thousandths or 6.4 percent so the industry average is 10.3 percent again this is below the industry average and this suggests that the business isn't generating the same return on its investment and in assets has other firms in the industry Again, the industry, you always have to compare yourself. I think that's one thing that's important is, uh, you know, there's always, in order to understand how you are, you know, you're doing, you have to be, you have to compare yourself to, to somebody else. So and that's why we always compare to the industry. So return on common equity, ROE, net income divided by common equity. So 54 divided by $415. So it's gonna be, uh, 0.13, which is 13%. Again, the industry average is 17.7. Again, this ROE is below the industry average, which suggests it is not generating as much return for stockholders as other firms in the industry. I mean, here's the thing, though: 13, 13 uh, percent. That is, I mean, it's pretty. It's not bad. I mean, I, I don't think it is because you don't, you're not going to get a lot of businesses out there with 13 percent on your investment. I mean, you think about that. You know, that's like investing a hundred dollars in, uh, you know, you're getting, you know, thirteen hundred dollars. Or if you want to make it larger, let's say you invest ten thousand, then you're going to get thirteen thousand. So it's not, it's not, you know, it's pretty good, but it's, it's not the same as the industry. So just keep that in perspective. So the position in, uh, in, in, in sum. The operating results have suffered because of the poor liquidity position, poor asset management, and poor debt position. Okay, so we, I think the, the all the red flags are, are, are starting to show. And, and and the other thing too is we might have done better. Like we, we need to compare it to a prior year to make you know decisions and to get a, a, a bigger picture. You know, what was the last year? What was it compared to last year? What was it compared to five years? You know, are we improving? Or are, is there is there a positive trend or is there a negative trend? So those are some things that, that we need to take into account. So I know this is, like it says, this is a slice. This is a position on a single day. But we need to see it in comparison to, like, years. Okay, so keep that in mind. Market value ratio. So, so price, uh, per, price per earnings ratio and market versus book ratio as well. So we'll take a look at these concepts in more depth next. So PE ratio, I used to just call it PE ratio, which is a price per earnings. So price per share, earnings per share. So the price per share is $23, uh, earnings per share is 216, so 10.6 times. Again, the industry average is 15, and we're below the industry, which suggests investors consider it to be a riskier investment than other firms in the industry. So I mean, those are decisions you'll have to make is uh, you know are you uh, are you going to invest money in this company versus an industry competitor? So a lot of times though, they say when you invest in a riskier company, your return 
is a lot higher. So those are things to consider as well. And it just depends on your risk level. So the market versus book ratio. So market price uh, divided by book value per share or market share. So it's 23 over 16, which is 1.4 times. Again, the industry average is two and a half. So this ratio is below the industry average, which suggests that investor value is value its stock lower than other firms in the industry. So again, all these indicators are below the industry average, okay? But it's but they're still positive, okay? Here, let me uh, get that off the screen. So, by the way, I hope you all are enjoying this class. You know, I'm really fascinated by by business and finance and and uh, accounting. You know, I'm very systems oriented. And I think that's one of the reasons why I really love uh, accounting and bookkeeping because, you know, wherever you put stuff, there's always a process that it has to go through. So anyway, just a little bit off topic. but So here's uh, the conclusion. Investors are, are not excited about the future prospects of the company. But keep in mind, you're still making money. Not as much as a, your comp as a competitor, but you're still making money for the most part. Summary of the ratios. Again, here they are, net income. Uh, ROA, uh, net income over sales, uh, times sales over total assets, so 54 over 1,500, times 1,500 over uh, 845, 3.6% times 1.775, so equals 6.4%, so this is kind of a summary of this. Okay, so here's a ratio analysis ROE. So ROA, net income over total assets, times equity multiplier, total assets over common equity. So when we do all the math right there, I mean, I'm not going to go through, but you can definitely do it on your own, which is going to equal 13%, okay? But that's the process to get to your ROE. Again, here's the uh, ROE again. So when you go through and do all of that uh, math, you'll get 13%. So this is an ex a little bit expanded. So equi equation provides overview, firm's profitability measures ROA, firm's expense control measures uh, measured by profit margin, firm's asset utilization measured by total asset turnover, okay? So again, limitations or the caveats, uh, ca caveats or caveats of financial statement analysis. Uh, comparison with industry averages is difficult if the firm operates uh, many different divisions. The industry average might not be the magical number that every firm should try to achieve, but it's it's all relative. Inflation distorts uh, balance sheets as well. Seasonal factors can distort ratios as well. In fact, uh, we had a we had a big old, I guess, twenty seven inch, uh, twenty seven foot pipe bust, and it distorted our financial ratios about four years four years ago up on the big farm south of Farmington. But you know that's what means seasonal factors or inflation as well. So those are. These are all um, indicators that limit a perfect financial statement. Again, window uh, dressing can make ratios look better than they really are. Different operating and accounting practices distort comparisons. Sometimes it's hard to tell whether a ratio is good or bad. You know, that's you know you, you have to dig a little bit deeper. So don't take it on the surface level. Difficult to tell whether a company is on balance or street. Uh, or a strong or weak position. Okay, financial statement analysis. So this is the conclusion. So the most important as well as the most difficult ingredient of successful financial statement analysis is the judgment that is used to reach final conclusions about a firm's future. So, you know, those are the things that you have to take into account is, is this really, is this really what we need? Is the information good enough? Okay. That's one thing, okay, and, and that's up to you. It's it's the user, the end user of the financial statements because they're going to make the decisions based on the information, okay. Okay, so that's the end of this uh, video in Chapter 2. So remember, weekly, make sure you all uh, upload, um, or you, first of all, go into to Sangage or MindTap and do your uh, assignments on there. Those automatically will feed into Blackboard. And then in Blackboard, remember to do your weekly discussion posts. Sometimes I'll post one discussion question. Sometimes I'll do a follow-up. Like last week, I did one on social responsibility or corporate social responsibility because that's an important area that is starting to make segue in the field of business because, you know, 
not only are we making money, but we need to find a way to be good corporate citizens. I did notice someone posted about corporate citizens. You know, it's just like being a good citizen. Like we're trying to give back to the communities. And that's what, in my opinion, that's what corporate social responsibility is. Finding a way to give value back to our communities. And for example, uh, Nappy, you know, do, do, delivers, they do uh, remote sales of alfalfa. They'll deliver alfalfa to the different chapters uh, over the winter, you know, to help the, to help the community, to help its people. So that's, a, that's an example. Walking in parades, giving out products. I think Nappy each year for the parades, they give about, you know, seven or $8,000 in, in, in products. And by the way, that's at cost. That's not retail. Okay. So this, those are just an example. So remember, keep in mind. And then uh, also to, to, um, download the pdf of the chapter exam download it you can highlight it or you can um you know just uh take it on on pen and paper and circle your correct answers and then just upload it into that uh section where it's usually below where i say chapter exam but that's kind of what how what this will look like and i know this is an exciting semester and you know remember to stay on top of it top of this work. Accounting is one of those classes or topics where it, it, one section, one class builds on the next, okay? It's very linear, okay? There's not a lot of ins and outs. It's, it's, it's very much like math, and typically a lot of people that like uh, business and finance uh, are pretty good at math, so just like algebra, you know, there's a lot of rules and operations you have to follow. Well, that's how this finance class is and most accounting classes, so anyway. I hope you enjoy this class. Uh, uh, please feel free to actually follow the, uh, su subscribe to the page because I do uh, in the future, you can go back and look at these videos if you want. I also have accounting and uh, government non for profit and also accounting uh, intro to financial and then college accounting videos as well. So, well, anyway, hope you all have a good weekend. Well, again, I'm, I'm recording this on Saturday morning. So doing a lot of work. Thank you. Enjoy.